What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Jen from Valley Buzzsaw. In today's video, I'm bringing you guys part three of our brand new series over here where I get to test out some custom concrete and plaster projects. I did have some major inspiration behind why I wanted to do this series in the first place and if you're interested in learning about um, why I love 5 Minute Crafts, why I love the channel Threadbanger, and why I love things that spread, you can check out the first video in this series. I will link to that like all over the place, wherever links can be up top, down below. But like I said, this is part three in the series, and in today's video, I'm going to be using these hexagon-shaped silicone molds, as well as palm trees, pineapples, flamingos, and some saguaro cactus molds. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a like. That's down below. And right next to that down below, you can hit that red subscribe button. If you haven't joined us over here already, we would absolutely love to have you. But without any more blabbering for me, let's jump right into the third part in this custom concrete and plaster project series. For this project, I'm going to need the silicone molds, petroleum jelly mold release, a measuring cup for both water and plaster, DAP plaster of Paris, sanding block, respirator, and a dust rag, a scale that measures in ounces, various sizes of mixing and measuring buckets, a silicone coated spoon that'll allow me to scrape down the sides of the bowl as well as scoop the plaster from the bowl into the molds, some sticky back felt, some paint brushes, and various shades of this Craft Smart acrylic craft paint, some multicolored paper clips. In addition to the paper clips, which I'm only going to be using in the hexagon shaped plaster pieces, I'm going to try my hand at attaching some magnets to the back of the others using E6000. E6000 is an industrial strength adhesive and I highly recommend using this in the most well ventilated area you possibly can. Wear your respirator just like you do when you're sanding and only use this if you are comfortable with using a really, really strong adhesive. Also, I want to show you something kind of cool with these magnets. You just put it down, push it close, and watch this. How cool is that? These things are super, super strong. I'm really excited to put them on the back of these other pieces and see if they're actually going to work on my refrigerator. My first step is going to be coating the inside of these molds with some mold release. I'm using petroleum jelly because it worked out like a dream with the trivet. And if you haven't seen that video, I will link to that one as well up in the cards and down in the description. But for now, we're going to just get started on applying this mold release. What's up, dude? Um, hey, you know what? There's like a buffet of ants in the backyard. If you want to go get them right now, that would be amazing. Feel free. They're all yours. And now we wait for them to cure. You can see I've got the paperclip ones all set as well. These are gonna be super fun. I actually can't wait to 
dive into all of these. I really hope that this is going to crack back and I'm going to be able to demold these, but I won't know that answer for 24 hours. So even though it's going to be like two seconds in YouTube time for you, I will see you guys all in 24 hours. Okay, everybody, here they are. Oh my God, could they be cuter? They came out so adorable. Obviously, I have no idea what they'll look like on the top side because I haven't demolded any of these things. Well, actually, that's not entirely true. I took out this half of a pineapple just to see what would happen to it. And I did that only about three hours after pouring. So it ended up curling a lot because I took it out and then just kind of left it like that for overnight. But um, other than that one, I have no idea how the rest of these are going to turn out, but I think they're going to come out great. Like, they are hard. They are in there. However, um, again, I, I did start doing some stuff. But see, like, this is coming off the silicone mold with absolutely no problem. So I'm pretty sure these babies are going to demold really nicely, and I'm going to be able to get to painting these ones especially, I'm super excited to make sure that the plaster kicks back in between because I think these are going to come out just so adorable. I'm like, I'm, yeah. <laughs> anyway, I'm ready to show you guys the demolding of these things. I'm so excited to actually finally get my hands on these, get them painted, make them cute. Um, but anyway, they are right down here at my feet and I'm just going to get started with demolding right now. And now the biggie. This one is the one that I was the most concerned with how it was going to turn out because they're so close together. But we're going to crack this back and we're going to just keep our fingers crossed that it comes out okay. Let's do this. Now, let's see if we can get them out of there. Yes, they are great. They came out so good. I'm gonna demold the rest in high speed and we'll get this done. Sort of nervous. Um, the one I'm most nervous about are the cactus. These are pretty big. Pretty thick. I mean, you can see the difference from that to my thumb. They're probably about a half an inch thick, and I'm kind of nervous that they're gonna make it or not on magnets. We're gonna see. They're not super heavy. I mean, they're fairly light because plaster, uh, but they are pretty thick. The other thing that I wanted to just point out really quickly on these ones, let's uh, see if we can get in here. You can kind of see, hopefully you can kind of see, how the plaster sort of sunk in in the middle where the paper clip went. It's not a deal breaker or anything like that. It's just these did sink in a little bit more than I had anticipated, but I feel like they're going to be incredible. Like, I'm so excited to get these sanded down and painted, and that's the next step. Okay, everybody, this is going to take about a hundred years. <laughs> These hexagonal ones with their six sides and then all the edges. And I just want to give them a very cursory sand because I don't want to take a whole bunch of material off, but I am hoping to just sand down enough that it can remove the petroleum jelly as well as just any of the sharp edges or big chunkers that um, got left over after the pour. So I'm just going to complete this and I'll just come back in when I am on like the last one or two. That way you guys don't have to sit here for 25 minutes of sanding, which I have to sit here for, but 
I'm gonna spare you that awfulness. And by the way, again, safety first, always wearing a respirator when I'm working with plaster. All right, I just knocked off any big tough edges on the sides, the top. I haven't obviously dusted these off yet, but they are done. And next step is moving on to these babies. It's gonna be interesting to see how I can get into little crevices, like, um, you know, getting a piece of sanding paper in there, in that little uh, divot in all of these areas where there is definitely petroleum jelly. Also like in the leg area without really destroying the piece. So that's why I made a whole bunch of extras. <laughs> We're just gonna see how it goes. Rinse, repeat. Since I'm using a sanding block like this, one of those medium sanding blocks with an angled side, I was really able to get like right in there and get those little bits um, out with no problem. Okay, everybody, you can see that we are done. Um, I'm pretty excited with how these all turned out. I'm gonna get to painting these now, but I did wanna at least just point out one little quick thing that kind of bummed me out a little bit. In the palms, you can see the fronds on the left-hand side here of these first two, they look terrific. But then this one, it's almost as if the fronds didn't even pour. They have a little bit of pockets of air bubble in there and if you haven't seen video one and two in this series, I will link to them down in the description, but I go into more detail there about what's going on with my plaster and why I have air bubbles, so you should definitely go check those out. So I just wanted to break in here really quick with some pieces that aren't complete yet because it completely occurred to me a couple pieces from the end that I never used a plaster sealant on this. In fact, I didn't do that in video one or two either and now I'm looking back thinking, hmm, that could have made like a little bit of a difference. I'm a little mad at myself for not even for a minute considering that I needed to do that. For these pieces, since they're just magnets and picture holders, you know, I didn't want to go out and buy like a concrete sealant for this. Instead of doing that, I just, I'm not even sure if this is a, an available product anymore. I'm hoping that it is and that it actually works, but my Delta Ceramicote Matte Interior Varnish is what I decided to just use as a quick sealant on all of these pieces. I thought that might be a good idea to use, that way it completely seals in the piece before I start applying paint, and that way the paint isn't going to peel off if these pieces hit something while they're still wet. she is coming out further than the edge of the piece Well, folks, as I sit here with my first failed attempt, and that's coming up soon, you want to definitely subscribe to the channel so you don't miss when I go back and talk about the first few projects in this concrete and plaster projects series. Some 
fun things have happened to this as well as the trivet, but I'm not going to share all that now. What I am going to share now is my most recent plaster projects and how it looks okay maybe on camera, but is a total fail. All right. First of all, I'm going to just bring one up to the camera so you guys can see what it looks like complete. Let's pick a good one. Let's go for purple. Okay. Now, you can see, hopefully, my face gets out of there. There we go. You can see that the paper clip definitely went in correctly, that the felt bottom actually attached with very little problem. But you see how this is shiny? That's because the matte finish that it was supposed to be ended up turning into a satin finish. I have no idea why. It could be that it's old. It could be that I just don't know what the heck I'm doing, which would be much more likely the case because here's something I'm gonna show you right now to prove that point. The yellow one. This is the only one this has happened to so far, but that's only because I haven't actually done this to the rest yet. Again, we'll bring this in close. Hopefully it refocuses here for you. Now, it's not focusing, but you can see this. Look, I'm just gonna do it for you. Oh, look at that. Oh, look at that. Oh, look at that. Um, yeah, that's the paint scraping off entirely, and that's under a coat of varnish. So I told you a little bit earlier that I was filming some that I was doing a varnish on first so that I could kind of use that as a sealant and then see how the paint turned out on those afterwards. I'm going to cut to that um, after footage right now. Okay, everybody, here is the moment of truth. These are the ones that I did the varnish on before I actually put the paint on to see if that would help seal up the plaster so that the paint adhered a little bit better. I'm just gonna peel this up off the wax paper and pray. Let's get in there. Oh, yeah, okay. Okay, well, that answers that question. No, she doesn't really work failed again so yeah as you can see although i'm not like attempting to be perfect here the bottom peeled off despite the fact that i like sealed it with that varnish if i used an actual plaster sealer or a concrete sealer it probably would have made a huge difference and actually sealed the pieces before i put the paint on the thing is, I'm not trying to like sell these. I'm not trying to do anything major with these. This was totally an experiment. And for the most part, I feel like it was an experiment that worked. These particular ones here with the paper clips, they're cute. So let me show you really quick how this works with a picture. Actually, instead, I'm just gonna use a business card because that's what I kind of have on hand right now. So. You take your business card, yes, this is mine, and or picture, and you just kind of slide it on in there. It works, it absolutely works. Nothing falls out, it's securely in there, and it takes a little bit to actually push it in. So I feel like for the most part, um, this one pretty much worked. There are definitely some finish issues and I have a feeling this is gonna all end up scraping off at some point in the future, but for now they look okay. However, the pieces I am the most excited about actually were the magnet pieces. I've got a couple of them here and I did not top coat these because I kind of liked the matte rough finish. I'm gonna flash these up right now, but I think we're gonna just get to some beauty shots as well. Aren't they cute? I love them. I think they came out so adorable, but I'm gonna do some close up beauty shots on these so you guys get a really good feel for exactly how they turned out.
have it. That is my absolute final thoughts on this project. Would I do it again? No, probably not. But am I gonna save those silicone molds just in case I get a wild hair? Yeah, probably. <laughs> it was fun to pour the plaster and it was fun to see what happened and how this all worked out, but I don't think this is a project I would ever really take on again. I've got a cute, bunch of cute little magnets out of the deal. I've got a whole bunch of these little picture holder hooby-doos out of the deal. But overall, I feel like this was probably, could be titled uh, Jen Fails for 20 Minutes Straight. <laughs> yeah, because I don't feel like any of this really worked out the way I actually wanted it to work out. Or that I had envisioned in my brain of how it would work out. Um, I'm moderately happy with the outcome, and I will probably put a few of these to good use. I'll throw some up on my fridge with the magnets, and I'll toss a couple of these in my office maybe with some business cards or just cute pictures or something in it, but overall, I definitely don't feel like I would do this one again. However, that doesn't mean that this video wasn't super great, so if you liked it, you know what to do. Give it a thumbs up down below. It really helps us out a lot and I totally appreciate it. Then right next to that thumbs up, you can click the big red subscribe button. Come on over and subscribe if you haven't already and you'd like to. We would love to have you here. Also, feel free to leave us a comment down below what you think about these projects, which one of them you liked the best, if there were any that you even did like, if you hated it, if you think it was a complete and utter waste of three days of my life, leave me a comment down below, <laughs> let me know. I can take it, don't worry, I can take it. <laughs> Focus. Focus, please. What's up everybody, welcome back. No, need to mute the TV. Ugh, I always forget to mute the TV. Of course, if I'm going to use my voice in this clip, I should go mute the TV. Um, also, just as a quick aside, if you're in my family, you will see these again at Christmas because they're going in your stocking. <laughs>